back, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Y'all know my guest tonight as a three-time Grammy Award-winning singer and songwriter with hits like Don't Start Now, Physical, and Levitating. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Dua Lipa. <laughs> Nice to have you back. Thanks Thank for being you. here. Thank you so much for having me in full house. My Isn't that goodness. nice? This Isn't is amazing. Nice? <laughs> now, we, we the last time you were on here was before COVID. Yes. Not, not that long before, but you had an extraordinary last couple of years. While crazy things were happening in the world, crazy success was happening for you. Rolling Stone called you the breakout pop star of the pandemic. Because I want to point out this here, your album, Future Nostalgia. Now the world, <laughs> the world, basically shut down on March 12th of 2020, and this album dropped on March 27th, 2020, and then you won a Grammy for it in 2021. What was it like? That's a long wind-up, long wind-up yes. to a simple question. What was it like to have this explosive success and not being able to go out into the world and, and enjoy it or engage? You had to kind of like see it from a distance. Well, I think to begin with, um, the whole idea of putting the album out, I think, like most people, I thought, oh, the pandemic, two weeks. Sure. You know, it'll be fine. Two sure. years later, we're still here. Mm -hmm. But um, I had worked on this album for so long, and I had just kind of been holding it. For a while, I was very passionate about it. I was very proud of it as well. It was a body of work where I finally felt like I'd found my confidence and who I was really as an artist and a songwriter. And so when everything shut down, I think there was a big part of me that just didn't want to believe it. And I also felt like with so much uncertainty and everything going on, I was like, you know what, maybe now is the time to release this album. And I'm really happy that I did because I feel like, you know, it. it and I have this whole philosophy that up until the point that this music gets released, mm -hmm. it belongs to me. Once it's out, it no longer is mine. Mm -hmm. And so when I see it like that and the music is out there and I, I have it in the hopes that these songs find a home with other people, that I felt like this was like the perfect time to, to release it. And so people's reaction having having been the way that, that it was, was just mind-blowing. It was, it was beyond anything that I could have ever hoped for, and, and maybe that was actually the fate that the album was meant to have. Well, people were glad that you did, because Levitating was the most streamed song of 2021 in the United States. And I'm just curious, I know you... I know you... I know you're a brilliant performer, but you also wrote that song. You're a songwriter at the same time. Yeah. Do you know, like, when you release this album, you're like, it's going to be levitating. Like, like, the, the, there are a bunch of bangers on there, but that's the one that... <laughs> that one was an extraordinary success. Do you know that it's going to be that one? Uh, definitely not. I mean, I, I can never preempt, like, what song is the one that people are going to react with the best, but... Um, Levitating was the first song that helped dictate the rest of the album. It was the one song where I was like, okay, I feel like this is exactly what Future Nostalgia is. Mm -hmm. And I had a really good, like, idea after writing Levitating of exactly what the rest of the album was going to sound like. And I think I had such, an, such a powerful feeling being in the studio after writing Levitating with my friends Sarah, Coffee, and Coz. And I think we all felt so energized and so excited afterwards, so it was very special. You were supposed to go on a world tour shortly after the album yes. dropped, right? How, mm. When were you supposed to go on the tour? I was meant to go on tour of April 2020. And you probably assumed, oh, it's going to happen. Because mm. we'll take a little break here. It'll be well, nice. Well, we postponed a little rest. it for a little bit. A little bit. And okay, then a so, little bit more. <laughs> so it's two years later. You're about to launch the world tour right now. Yeah. 23 countries, something like that? Yeah. Okay. Wh 
so much planning goes into a world tour. Mm -hmm. It's like an invasion. What? <laughs> how is it going to be different now, you know, in 2022 than what you planned in 2020? How, how is the, the, the time difference, the COVID having happened? What's that going to change the tour for you? Well, it's actually massively different. Um, initially, when I was meant to go on tour, it was only meant to be a month after the album was out. Mm -hmm. So I guess it just kind of... I'm hoping that all the fans would just really quickly learn all the lyrics and come and watch me. Um, but this time, I've done a lot of audience research, and so I feel like I know what songs people like. And the Future Nostalgia Tour really is the Future Nostalgia Tour because it's, it's predominantly songs from that album, whereas I think before it would have been bits here and there and lots from my first album, and now it's like the perfect combination, the very best of. We have to take a break, uh, but stick around. When we come back, I will ask Dua Lipa about her collaboration with Sir Elton John.